her name was Zenobia, Queen of Palmyra. She was born in 240 AD. She died, as well as we know, 274 AD. At least that is when she disappeared from the records of history. She was a queen in what is now present-day Syria. She came to rule Palmyra after her husband had died, King Odanifius, who was assassinated. For a brief moment in time, she reached out and moved Egypt, snatching it away from Roman rule. <laughs> Queen Zenobia, in every sense of the word, was a warrior queen. A tribute to Queen Zenobia. I am queen, and as long as I breathe, I will reign. After the death of Claudius, she seized the opportunity and personally led her army, known as the Warrior Queen, in battle against the powerful Roman army of Emperor Aurelian. She would finally be defeated to the Romans in the third century. The name Zenobia would strike fear in the hearts of men and women. She was described as dark complexion beauty with long locks of hair. Known for her beauty and intelligence and courage. She was also known as an able-bodied horsewoman. After Queen Zenobia's defeats at the hands of the Roman Empire, At last, there were many stories of what became of her. Throughout the ages, some would say she was made a slave in the imperial courts to do the bidding and suffer the indignities. Others would say that she committed suicide before this would ever come to fruition. The most intriguing is that the emperor spared her life and granted her an elegant villa to live out her days and what was lost. Here is a quote of a letter written by Emperor Aurelius. It references Queen Zenobia. For those who speak of contempt of this war, I am now waging against a woman or ignorant and a fool. For the character and power of Zenobia is impossible to explain. Her warlike preparation, her military might, her genius is not to be fooled with. And I am not a fool. We need this in 
closing. Two queen, the warrior queen, the mighty's and noble. I left you in the morning, and in the morning glow, you walked away beside me to make me sad to go. There have been many fierce warrior women throughout the ages. For that, there can be no doubt. However, one comes to mind at this time. A bone at its mightiest. One woman who would not bow to the interlopers and call no man her master. Her name was Bordecai. Who was Bordecai? How did she become this great warrior queen of the Britannic Celtic Iceni tribe? She would not just let the Romans conquer her home without a fight. The annexation of her home was the final straw. She and her army would go on to defeat the Roman Ninth Legion and destroying British Roman domains of Camaludium, Londinium, and River Limium. Her determination to not live under subjugation is a testament to her spirit. Like most young Celtic Iceni woman. She was trained in combat. Her brutal campaigns after the dedication of her two daughters is legendary. Sadly, however, During that time, there were no paintings or statues, only the description of this tall Amazonian woman with her mane of hair down to her hips and eyes that would glow and a scowl that would make men tremble. With no quarter given, no quarter to be expected,
from the Romans. Queen Boudicai and her army fought against what the world had known at this time, the mightiest empire. In truth, one of the mightiest empires ever known to walk this planet. Queen Budokai and her people will never be forgotten. Even though her army was defeated in life, the truth is her spirit would never be conquered. And it is said upon her defeat she looked away to the mountains and thought the mountains are calling and I must go. Nefertiti, the beautiful one, she was an Egyptian queen, wife of the great Ahatanan. The earliest images of Nefertiti can be found in the Theban tombs of the royal palace of Berinthina. It has been said she played an important part as a high priestess, which is usually not in reference to a queen. A stone that was recovered in Luxor shows Nefertiti ritually smiting the enemies of Egypt. It is said that Nefertiti played a very important religious role beside the king Akhaka and the guiding of her people in the principles of the god they worship at times. She was, some would argue, a co-ruler of the 18th dynasty. Known for her remarkable beauty, which is timeless, as her bust shows, which was discovered in 1912 in Amana. This bus measures 19 inches tall and weighs approximately 44 pounds. Scholars are of the belief that Queen Nefertiti co ruled with the great Ahatanai over. Imagine if you will, the queen, in all her splendor, 
Let's go back in time. When Egypt was at a mighty place. It was said that she was the wisest of the wise. The fairest of the fair. One of the most just rulers at this time. What must her days have been like when she held court? What must her nights have been like when she prayed to her gods and worshipped alongside her people? The mysteries that will always surround her life. Only in the depths of time grows ever deeper as we look for clues and search for more, hoping that we could just find just more part just a small part of her history to have a greater understanding of who she was. Some would have you believe that she never existed, that she is a figment of the imagination going wild. But the proof is there on the blocks on the hieroglyphs and the writings and finally in her bus that was discovered on that fateful day in 1912 in Anamai, Egypt. Let the record show that she was there and her bus is a testament to her enduring legacy. When one looks to the heavens, one can reach for the stars.